Hi and welcome. My name is Susan from Susan's Vintage Life. I'm here today to talk to you about it. Uh, I was tagged on the perfect subscriber tag. So I'll tell you a little bit about how what kind of YouTube subscriber I am. I have to tell you that this has truly been an education for me watching people do this tag. There was a lot of things that I didn't know. Um, that I do know now and it'll make me a better subscriber. Okay, the first question is, do you subscribe right away or do you find a new, when you find a new channel or video or try a few videos first? I generally try a few videos first because I wouldn't want to unsubscribe. That almost seems cruel, so I don't do that. But I do try to look at a couple before I make a decision about, um, about subscribing. Does the make sure you subscribe mantra ever sway you to subscribe? Actually, it does uh, on some cases because it reminds me if I haven't done it yet that I might want to think about it if it's something I've been watching a few times. I say that on my videos because a lot of the people that view my videos weren't necessarily YouTube um, subscribers before and really didn't know how it worked and um, that they suggested that I put that in. Uh, so I do put in there about subscribing, putting a hit in the thumbs up, uh, writing a comment and all those things. Uh, so um, yeah, I, it has swayed me on occasion. I don't know that sway is the right word. Maybe reminded me when I hadn't done it yet and wanted to. Okay. How many channels do you have notification bell turn on for? I will tell you it's too many. I get so many notifications. Um, and I haven't turned any of them off because I'm afraid that I'll miss something that I don't want to miss. Or miss somebody I truly love following. So I kind of leave the notification bells on. Um... As they get more prevalent, I might have to rethink that, but for right now, I do have the bells on. Do you watch every video from your subscription feed or only your favorites? Actually, um, I watch all the ones that I have time for. Um, I watch as many as I possibly can, and if I find because of other things that are happening in my life that... Um, I can't watch all that I want to. I try to distribute it evenly, that I watch one from one person's uh, one content provider and another one from another content provider rather than watching two or three from one person. Um, that's the way I've done it in the past, but I do try to watch everything that I get a notification on. How many channels do you never miss an upload for no matter how busy you are? Um, honestly, uh, over the past year with the things that have been going on in my life, I can't say that anybody I had, that there's anybody I haven't missed one or two videos from, um, through no fault of my own and through not, not, certainly not because I didn't have the desire to see them, uh, but because it was just inevitable that I couldn't get to them. And by the time I start... And, you know, they keep flowing, so you get further and further behind. Sometimes I go back and try to catch up, like I'll hit on the subscription button and look at some one person's uh, videos and, and see if there's one I think I missed and maybe I view it even though it's after the uh, a little bit late. Um, but I have missed some of everybody's, um, and I wouldn't want to under normal circumstances. Um, do you skip ads or, or wait first, what kind of commenter are you? Um, I try to be a kind, encouraging, uh, commenter, um, unless I think that, uh, there's something that I think is going to hurt somebody, then I may say something, but 90% of the time my comments are I don't think, I, I think I only one time suggested that somebody may want to think about something, uh, just consider something they said. Um, but other than that, I've never left a negative comment at all. And I didn't really consider that one a negative comment. It was just to 
suggestion or uh, thought. Um, but no, I am a very, I try to be a very positive commenter, very encouraging commenter, because no matter how the video turns out, people got ready, they sat in front of the camera, and they spoke to the world. Uh, that's not always easy to do and e even the prep and thinking about what you're going to talk about and all those things require some require work so I definitely try to um, be encouraging do you skip ads or what I have to say that in the past I have skipped ads but since I've heard people say that that hurts the content providers uh, finances I certainly won't do it anymore so I have been watching ads and I will continue to do so. Um, do you click affiliate links or use affiliate codes? Yes, anytime I can, I use an affiliate code, even if it's something I plan to buy, because my understanding is if you hit an affiliate code and even buy it at a later date, that would still make a connection. So I do try to use an affiliate code when I um, make a purchase. And if I can remember where I saw it, even if it's at a later date, I go back to that affiliate code to make that purchase. Um, what's your preference when it comes to video length, your sweet spot? I have to say that when, you, when it goes beyond 25 to 30 minutes, um, it's a crunch for me to be able to watch it because the time span I have in between things is not always that long. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty much a maximum of 25 to 30 minutes, anything longer than that. I have a hard time planning for, I guess is the right word, um, fitting in between this or between that. So um, I would say that's probably my sweet spot, no more than 25 to 30 minutes. Um, do you thumbs up most videos? I thumbs up all videos. Like I said, people went through the trouble to do it. Uh, they spoke, they researched, they got their thoughts together and produced something for us to see. And I think that always deserves thumbs up. Do you ever thumbs down a video? I have never given anyone a thumbs down. Um, and I never will. Um, I'm not sure what that means. Uh, when you get a thumbs down is you didn't like the video, you didn't like the content provider, you didn't like the content they provided, uh, did you not like them? I'm not sure what it means. It's kind of like getting a performance review and somebody's saying that um, you were an underperformer, uh, that you didn't meet the you didn't meet the performance standards and not telling you what they are or not telling you what you did wrong and your behavior didn't warrant an increase or what have you and, and they don't give you any more specifics than that. How do you improve from that point? To me, that's what a thumbs down does, whether it's good or whether it's it, the thumbs down doesn't tell me tell you anything. It's like nothing you can take and work with to make to improve yourself. You know, if somebody leaves me a comment that makes a suggestion about something I could do better, like somebody said I was sitting too far away from the camera, um, you know, those kind of things. If somebody would tell me something like that, that's something I can do something about. Um, you know, it, it's I can try to improve. I use um quite a bit. And, you know, if somebody, somebody has said that to me and my husband, as a matter of fact, and I can try to eliminate them. Um, I'm not doing very good since I just did it again, huh? But anyway, that's how I feel about thumbs down. They're, they're kind of meaningless and just a little hurtful at times. Do you share others' YouTube videos on your social media? I um, have shared some. I am not a social media genius. There's a lot of things I need to learn and a lot of things I need to learn how to do. And I've been working on that. I've got a couple books. I've been trying to study and get better at a lot of things. Um, so I wouldn't say that I've particularly shared much on other social media. But I plan to do better at that in the future. Okay. That's my answer to the tag. I try to be a good subscriber. I try to get to people's videos. I do watch. I have to say that... Um, I do watch everybody's video to the end. 
uh, if I may, if I know that there's time and I watch you to the end, because I found out the hard way one time I didn't watch it to the end in the very beginning and I didn't realize I miss miss glitzy fritzy and her fritzy her fritziness at the end of her her um, videos and that's some of the best stuff there is. So that taught me a long time ago to stay to the end. Okay. Today, my vintage item that I were going to share with you is a couple vases, vases, whatever you want to call them, that I have. And they're made of milk glass from Westmoreland, which is actually was in Ohio and in, in Pennsylvania. Uh, this is the grapes on panels, and um, it's something that has been around my family for a long time. Um, and I really enjoy them. As you could see the pattern in it. Um, my mother loved milk glass. She wasn't a real, um, she wasn't a knickknacky person like some of my aunts. And uh, she doesn't care a whole bunch for the the porcelain dolls that I showed that I showed one of. And she wasn't a big jewelry person, but milk glass was something she really liked. Um, she liked colonial furniture and milk glass. So that's kind of, uh, they always remind me of her. But that's my th item to share, and it is vintage. Most of them were considered made somewhere between, uh, between 1920 and 1946. And then there was a reopening for milk glass, and there was some production in the late 70s. Um, I don't know exactly when these are for. According to the marking, they're earlier ones, uh, but I couldn't swear to swear to it by for sure. It was a local company, so it was a, a lot. You saw a lot of this around this area. Okay. That being said, I want to say thank you for watching. Uh, have a wonderful weekend. Have a wonderful holiday tomorrow. Uh, and I will see you in a week. Thank you and have a great week. Bye.